Could you get paid $10,000 for a one-page website project in Editor X? Well, I did, and I think you can too. So today, I'll show you how. Hey, my name is Brad Hussey, and I'm a professional web designer. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all our latest videos on the art, business, and craft of web design. As a freelancer, you're probably dedicating a ton of your time working on projects, delivering the service. Well, I did too when I was starting out. However, what if I told you that you could get paid $10,000 for designing a one-page website? I'm able to, and you can too. So let me show you how. This is the first video in a series of three videos where I'll break down and walk through the anatomy of how to land high-paying projects like this one. I'll talk pricing, contributing factors to getting high value clients, how to position yourself as the expert, how to do the sales call, and over deliver to leave the client over the moon happy and ready to send you referrals. In this first video, I'll focus on the nature of what this project looked like, the scope of it, and how I ended up pricing it to get to that $10,000 number. So let's get into it. If there was a word to capture the theme of this project, it, it, it's gonna be high stress or urgent, high stress and urgent. That's technically four or five words, but that's that, that summed up <laughs> the project. There were serious overtime hours, evening design sprints while my family was eating popcorn and watching movies on the couch just outside of my studio door. There were frustrations, out of nowhere tech glitches, confusions with hosting, domain transfers, um, nervous, client calls after hours, emails, text threads, and long distance phone bills. Didn't realize that I didn't have a long distance plan <laughs> with somebody not in my country, so I'm paying out of pocket for expensive long distance phone bills. The reality is it's a $10,000 one page project. So let's talk about that because that's interesting. And I know that if I were to be new at this, if I were starting or if I was like, in the middle of it, kind of struggling and trying to figure out like, how, how can I grow? Like, how can I get out of this small budget, chasing down clients all the time, scraping work together range and get into something bigger. So if I were to see that somebody that I was in a community with leading the community or involved in the community was like, I just wrapped up a $10,000 one page project. I'm like, wait a minute. I usually do 40 page projects for $5,000. What's happening here? Where's the disconnect? So let's, let's talk about that. Let's start off with what was the project? So unfortunately I can't divulge specifics due to confidentiality and privacy and whatnot. And I know that that's not as fun and as exciting. It's just like straight up giving you all the details. Um, and perhaps you want specifics as proof that this even happened and that I'm not making this all up, but You'll just have to take my word for it. So what I can tell you is this. This was a website redesign project. It was very urgent in nature with a very short, non-negotiable timeline due to external factors. And the potential upside for the client was huge, or inversely, the potential downside was very bad, potentially catastrophic. Maybe that's a bit dramatic, but it was a very bad downside. If nothing happened, the downside was inevitable and not good. So significant lost opportunity costs for the client and the client ultimately couldn't live with the downside, nor did they have access to a professional web designer who could help them attain that upside that they were going for or, or hoping for. So here I am with this incredible opportunity on my hands. What I'm going to tell you is that I don't take on website projects very often. So I actively do client work, but I don't do a lot of it because I don't need to, nor do I want to do a lot of it. So when you build your business with multiple revenue sources, you have the, the luxury of getting to be choosy to go, well, I'm only going to work on projects that matter to me or that I'm excited about or pay well or, or a combination of all the above. You may have seen the Venn diagram, good, fast, cheap. My approach is like you get to pick two and I only offer two. 
of those three. You don't get all three. You don't get good, fast, and cheap. For me, I work fast. I don't like long, drawn-out projects. That's not my, it's not my deal. And I only do good work, as good as I can possibly deliver. So that means to work with me on a website project means it has to be fast and it has to be good, which means it is excluding cheap. So therefore it is expensive. So that's just the way I do business. I've done the other options before where I've done good and cheap, which means it's not fast. And I've also done fast and cheap, which is not good. I don't like them. They're just not winning strategies. The client's not happy. I'm not happy. It's just, it's something that makes you want to throw in the towel and go back to a traditional day job approach, working at an agency or whatever. So here's a little bit of context into my pricing strategy. Everybody's pricing strategy is a little bit different. Everybody has a different approach and there's no like one true way to do it. There's hourly, there's daily, there's weekly, there's fixed rates, there's value rates, you know, there's everything in between. I have my own approach and my own suggestions that I give people and it usually varies depending on where you're at, the context of the project, lots of different factors. For me, I tend to price my design and marketing services by the day ranging from two to $3,000 per day with some wiggle room in and around that. And typically with short timelines, like I said, fast. I do fast work. So they're usually one to five days. So I don't like taking on like 10, 20, 30 day projects, three month projects. I don't really like doing that. What I like doing is short bursts of like intense, urgent work that's like important, exciting, valuable, and expensive. It's just, that's the way I like doing it. Also, it leaves me a lot more time to work on other aspects of my business and also have a life where I'm not just always tied to my computer doing client work, as probably many of us here have experienced. So let's do a little basic math. I'll bill, let's say a one day project for around $3,000, let's say. And I'll do a five day project for something like $10,000 with wiggle room in there. And there's other factors that come into play. There are a few other factors and you should consider these factors as well. I'll take into consideration the experience, like my experience, the client's needs, the urgency, and ultimately the most important one is the value of attaining the outcome. That's like a key, key part is what's the value for the client? The value of attaining the outcome, not like how good do they feel or what's the value? Like, like, I mean like an actual true blue definition of what is value, like in a monetary, economic, business sense. What sort of value do you get out of this? Do you save lots of time? Do you gain lots of time? Do you make more money? Do you save a ton of money? Is it a combination of it? Um, there's lots of different things here that you can quantify value. And so what's the value of the outcome? So determine the outcome and the value of the outcome or flip it on its head and determine, this is still value-based approach here, determine the downside, like the, the worst case scenario, the worst likely scenario, Let's go with. And what's the cost of that happening? So then you ask the client, like, well, are you willing to live with that downside? And if they're not, that means like, okay, that's an expensive problem. So that's value. What's the value of, of that problem happening? Like, so the cost, or what's the value of the upside? So there's a couple ways of looking at it. So these are the, the factors that I take into consideration. I don't just say my rate's two grand a day and that's it. It's gonna be 10 days, so we're looking at whatever that is. That's not really how I do it. I don't just do it like that. I will say, well, here's a benchmark for me. Depending on these other factors, the price will vary. Sometimes it'll be a little less because I'm really excited about the project. Sometimes it'll be more because I'm not that excited about the project and there's not much back end value for me, meaning like extra connections or access to a more valuable network or 
that person's got a lot of influence and my name's gonna be out there. Like, I don't know. Like there's other things like that contribute to the price. So what I'm trying to say here is I'm painting a picture here of, this wasn't just like out of nowhere, wow, this like one shot, expensive, simple project. This is just kind of the ballpark that I play in when it comes to web design services. And it's not extraordinary. It's very straightforward. Talk to any full-time professional designer, graphic designer, web designer, working with agencies, subcontracting from them or doing their own client work. Like that's kind of standard. It's kind of standard operating procedure. And so I'm seeing that as a, if you're not there yet, you can aspire to that because it's very realistic. It just takes some practical steps to get there, some time and skill. And if you, you know, are already there, well then you know what I'm saying is true and you have your own variation of this story. Basically what I try to do is I wanna find out, and I'm still talking here about like, what was this project? So I couldn't give you specifics of the project, but what I could give you is the nature of the project, very urgent, and I don't take on projects unless I know I can be valuable and like actually do something, like I'm not just wanting to create a pretty design because it's pretty. Like I want to solve some sort of problem and have the client go, whew, you saved my neck there. Like that's exciting to me. So if a client comes to me with a big problem, a short timeline, timeline, and I can make the problem disappear in short order and put them in an advantageous position to experience the valuable outcome I just mentioned, like generate more sales during a huge launch, capture email leads uh, with like a huge influx of traffic or implement a strategy that's gonna help them double or triple a meaningful metric over the next year. Well, that's also advantageous for me to be in because I can help the client win and I win as well by, by association, by proxy. And wasn't it Zig Ziglar who said, you can have everything in life that you want if you will just help other people get what they want. I think I got that right. The point here is to focus on serving the client very well. And I cannot help the client win unless I have the resources to execute at a high degree of quality and professionalism very fast. So there's a little insight as to how I do business as a professional web designer, consultant, uh, and coach and creator. That's kind of how I do it. It's not everybody's cup of tea. That's not how everybody likes to do it. You know, not every web designer wants to go that approach. But some key principles here is that charge for your work, charge based on value, or at least get close to that. Know that, you know, what you're offering, if it is a valuable offer, there is value tied to it and, and the client needs you and you're not taking advantage of them. If you can genuinely get them the outcome or help them get away from the, the downside, that's the nature of a good high value design business. And those are just a few of the elements of how I get projects like this one. In the next video, I'll talk about how to present yourself as the expert and reveal my personal winning strategy on how to get noticed and selected for high value gigs. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part two of this series. And if it's up already, well, click here somewhere to keep watching and we'll see you there.